All right, appreciate you all coming out on a Wednesday night uh, uh, for the Polar Vortex game. You know, uh, and this obviously this is a game that you know we had no control over the schedule it causes us to have five games in ten days. This is the third game of that. Uh, very very proud of the effort of our team. Uh, you know, I thought to come back uh, this SIUE game the other night was very physical, extremely physical. So was the Eastern Illinois game, but the SIUE game was particularly physical, uh, and we were kind of beat up coming into tonight. And we talked a lot about, you know, you've got to be focused from the beginning of the game. I thought we played extremely hard for 25 minutes against SIUE. And after watching film, it kind of bore that out. Tonight, we were focused early, and, and we were able to maintain it throughout the game. Um, you know, we were, they, they, they were in the game in the first half because of offensive rebounds. They had 10 offensive rebounds at the half, and they were dominating us on the boards. And that was one of our, you know, that was our first key. We, you've got to out-rebound them to have a chance to win. And we talked about the second half every round as we go through. Uh, we break the game down into 10 rounds to each media timeout. And uh, as we talked about the rebounding battle and where we stood as we went through each round in the second half. And, you know, as we got closer to being even with them in rebounds, uh, we got a lead. We were able to push it out a little bit. And then once we took the lead in rebounds with about four or five minutes, about four and a half minutes to go at that under four media timeout, we were up one. And then you knew if you out rebound them for the rest of the game, if you win that last round on the, on the boards, you're going to win the game. And uh, I just thought we did an outstanding job job there. You can't say enough about individual efforts of, you know, Jessica Winfrey. We weren't sure if she would be in the lineup tonight. And, uh, you know, it was a game time decision. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, she was able to go. You know, she just continues to amaze me with how she responds uh, to adversity that she has to face. And I hope our young players are learning a lot about how hard you have to play and what you have to do uh, to, to, to win games at this level. Uh, Taylor Porter, you know, we, uh, that's that's what she's capable of being right there. Great mid-range game, and once she once she takes that with confidence, it opens up three-point shots for her. And her her, her form is better. Uh, she's not in a rush. She's playing with confidence, and everything negative that happened to her in this game. Instead of hanging her head, she went and did something positive uh, to make up for it. Uh, so, really proud of her. And you know, Jansen Starks uh, really got beat up, uh, but went just went to the line and made her eight free throws, eight of eight from the free throw line. Uh, as a team, 25 of 32 from the free throw line, and out rebounded them by two, and only turned it over nine times, and then held them to 27 percent from the field uh, when they come into the game, shooting about 39, almost 40 percent. So, uh, just pleased with the effort. Now now we've got to turn around in a couple of days and go down to Martin and play UT Martin, uh, which is going to be, you know, a tall task. And I don't, I don't want to leave out uh, Natanya Jackson's continued improved play. Uh, you know, she almost had a double double tonight and made some plays when they doubled the post. Uh, she made some plays to to help us and set a couple of great screens in transition to get pressure off our point guards. What does it mean to still be alive for another day? Well, I just. You know, all I'm concerned about, and I told the team right before the game, all I'm concerned about ever is just living in the moment. And I've talked about it for years. And I just think when you when you play, and one of the th one of the keys tonight was to play present, which means be in the possession that you're in, and just worry about that. Don't worry about well, we've got to win this to the tournament. I think that adds un undue uh, negative pressure. Um, just worry about the process and be process oriented. And so we talked a lot about that. And I told the team, I, this is no more important a game than we played when we played Robert Morris the first game of the season, and no more important than if we were playing in the OVC championship. And I think if you approach it that way, then when you get in those moments, you know, and a few years ago when we won a conference championship and we had a we had a game on the road that if you win, you know your team's going to win a regular season title. And you know our team was relaxed in that game, and that game was a tight game. It goes to overtime, and our team understood it's just about one possession at a time, and then we win by 15 in overtime. You know the other team, obviously, and watching film, very tight and nervous looking, like they understood the the moment. And I think it's sometimes it's better when you just worry about your process and what it takes to be successful, and that's all we're focused on. I mean we can go down to Martin and and lose to, to UT Martin and be out of the tournament. And that does not make the next game any less important. 
you know, and that's that's my focus. And you know, hopefully we we go down there and we put up a fight and we're able to come away with a victory. But you know, I'm just worried about the process, one possession at a time, and our players getting better one possession at a time. In games that you pretty much have to win to keep those hopes alive, Natanya has really come alive. Another near double double. She plays nearly 20 minutes. Right. How nice is it with that short bench to have her? Well, I mean, she's she's got an opportunity. Uh, and she's taking advantage of it. And you know, the one thing, and I don't know about other people, but I usually see players uh, what they're capable of in practice, and then sometime around three weeks to a month, we see that translate to the court uh, as players improve throughout the season and everything. And she's been, this is what she's been in practice, only a little better. Uh, she's finished a little better in practice against better competition than she's played in the OVC against, you know, one of our assistant coaches who played professionally who's still young and a, a very talented player. And Natanya's been very good. And if she continues to stay focused and grow, uh, she's got a chance to be pretty good. So we're seeing right now what she was in practice a couple of weeks ago, you know, and what we've seen in practice coming into this little stretch of games. Uh, is a little better. So I'm hoping she continues to grow and we see better play out of her Saturday and we see better play out of her Monday. Um, you know, and Saturday will be a tough for her because of the way Martin plays. It'll be a really interesting to see how she responds to that and if she's able to move and uh, stay in the game. Is there any concern with Natanya and her conditioning? And if not, is, there, is it nice to be at a point where five games in 10 days is no worse on her than anyone else? Yeah, her, you know, I mean, she's lost probably 145 pounds at this point, almost 150. Uh, so proud of, of what she's done transforming her body. And it's kind of helped her transform her mindset. Um, and that's a that's an ongoing process, and it's gonna it's gonna continue to to happen uh, if she's gonna be successful and do the things that she's capable of doing. She's what conditioned enough now to play. You know, beginning of the year, she wasn't conditioned enough to play consistent minutes, and now she is where she can play four or five minutes in a row, and then come out. And if she has a media timeout, she's ready to go back and play four or five more minutes. So, you know, that that obviously helps her be under control. She's starting to, to figure out how to use her new body as well. Um, you know, I mean, she lost it. She lost a person basically, and so her body changed. And you know, she was very coordinated uh, at her size before she lost the weight. She was very coordinated, and then she got less coordinated after she lost the weight because it's, she hadn't been that light since she was in like the sixth or seventh grade, literally. So, uh, just proud of where she is, and, and just hope to see continued growth and focus from her. Speaking of that growth and focus, you know, she picks up the tech ball and she gets two thousand first half. Right. Normally. Earlier in the season, you would pull her, you pull her, but she didn't commit a second foul at all in the second half. Just right. talk about the mental changes she's had. To yeah, she's. I mean, it, it goes back, I think, to as she's she's seen her body change and she's become uh, proud of, of what she's accomplished, which makes you want to do more. You know, and whether you're an athlete or, or any person, uh, once you achieve a certain level of success, you usually want to keep going and see how far you can get with it. Um, just proud of, of where she is right now. And her mindset has gotten a lot better over the course of this season uh, as she's gotten in better condition. And, you know, tonight uh, she got the technical. And, you know, my first thought is, first thing I asked is, what did she say? Because I thought she said something. And she didn't say anything. She didn't, she didn't, you know, she just, there were some bodies bumping into each other and she pushed a player away, uh, which by rule, it's a dead ball. Any contact is an automatic technical foul. Uh, so the referees made the right call. She wasn't upset about it. You know, when I came over, uh, when she came over to the bench and I asked her, you know, what happened, what'd you do? And she said, I didn't say anything. I said, okay. And uh, she said, I just pushed her. I pushed her a little bit. I didn't, you know. So it's just one of those things, I believe, a couple of months ago. Uh, you know, she may have she may have pushed her again. She may have been mad at the call. 
you know, she just accepted it. It was what it was. I mean, there was it was a very physical game, and she just pushed somebody a little bit. And the referees made the right call. She accepted the results, and and that's that's growth for her. So, you know, I'm like I said, I'm pleased with where she is right now. What was the in injury for Jessica, and how close was she? To she just banged up. Um, you know, she's she just got. I mean, she's, she's had both knees reconstructed in her career. She's had a ruptured Achilles tendon. Uh, she's had other knee issues uh, pop up from time to time, a little meniscus here and strain there. And, you know, she just, she's however old she is. Uh, you know, I always kid her about being old. Uh, but she's a fifth-year senior that's coming to the end of her career and wants to get every, every ounce out of it she can. And uh, that's what she's doing. But it, so it wasn't anything specific. It was just she just banged up. She tweaked some things that she already had going on. I can't imagine she would want to sit with four. No, I I told her we weren't. You know, I didn't let her do anything at all in practice. I didn't even let her go through walkthroughs yesterday, and uh, told her she could warm up and shoot around this morning, and that was about it. Maybe get a trip or two up and down the court, and if she was limping, then she probably wasn't gonna play. And, uh, you know, she didn't limp at all and shoot around. She actually did more than she snuck in and did a little more than she was supposed to. And, uh, you know, she said, I'm good to go. So, you know, she's good to go. She's going to play. How banged up has she been throughout this entire season? Uh, we'll talk about it after the season. You know, I, I don't want to talk about any specific things that, that might be going on with her uh, just for her sake. But she's just over the course of her career, she's just gone through a lot. What does, it, what does it mean to see her overcome that? You know, I, I'm just, I, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of her uh, on and off the court. She's a tremendous uh, lady. Um, she's grown in. She's finishing up her master's. She's working on her master's right now. Uh, she's grown into a fine woman. And, you know, from a personal standpoint, I'm just thrilled with how she's developed off the court. As, you know, on the court, she really hasn't had, and I, I hate it for her, because she hasn't had a fair opportunity to develop her skill set so we could see what she was capable of being. You know, she tore her knee up. She played her freshman year after, the, after tearing her knee up. Uh, and it was her second knee injury. She averaged a double-double as a, as a redshirt freshman. And then she came back, and I really thought she was poised to be a player of the year type player. Uh, she, had, she had a three-point shot that had developed. Uh, ball handling was a lot better. Her skill set had really jumped like you want it to from freshman to sophomore year. And then she ruptures her Achilles right before we play our first game. And, uh, you know, then that's tough. It was tough to get that. She lost all that. She never really had a real off season to prepare and do what she's capable of doing. Uh, so I hate it for her from a basketball standpoint. Uh, kind of hated it for us from a team standpoint because we lost a phenomenal rebounder a couple of seasons. And, uh, but, you know, what she's able to do and stay with you know, the game, because she loves it so much. Uh, just just so proud of her. All right, that it? Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.